Welcome back to the show. We're about to learn the secret sauce. Jay, it's finally a pleasure to meet you IRL, man. It's been so long. Like, I think we, we've we had like the longest Zoom relationship. <laughs> <laughs> like, is there a Facebook status thing? I mean, I'm not even on Facebook anymore. I, th- I think that's yeah. changed since we first met. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Facebook's not a thing anymore. It's dead. Oh, man. <laughs> Just kidding. Facebook, you could sponsor us. We love you, Meta. We love you. <laughs> that's right, Meta. <laughs> um, but yeah, we met uh, through Code Newbie. Yeah. Is how Saran, we, we and... establish relationships. And uh, yeah, through Saran. Saran actually... Yeah. Uh, intro me to you because you're doing the Saturday Saturday coding sessions something like that yeah yeah shout out to Saran the big sis like absolutely loved that community I mean I still love it like <laughs> I'm not as active anymore but like, yeah, yeah. Still... it's evolved now it's a it's a forum mm-hmm. at this point yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, you know th- at that point I had been podcasting for a little bit and I think I had jumped in the Python community that was there was trying to get more and more involved and trying to get more and more attention. So I was like, yo, I got podcasting skills. Let me talk to the, let me talk to the boss and figure out like how we can get more time and energy on stage. And yeah. that was the thing that she had been planning. And she was like, yeah, you know, you need to interview this, this guy named Brian. And I was like, uh, okay. I, I, I wasn't a developer at the time. So I, like, yeah. I was learning and it was like, I'm going to be talking to some, some big shot in like <laughs> big Silicon shot, yeah. Valley or whatever. And then like you jump in and you're like in your apartment, I'm in my apartment. We're just chilling. Like, yeah, that, what's wild is cause I was actually, I think I recorded my kitchen and I had I a, a one bedroom, 500 square foot, foot place in Oakland. Uh, I was paying 700 bucks a I, month. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. I was like... It, it was way too much for what I had. Safe to say it was a long time ago. Yeah, right? a long time ago. <laughs> I definitely upgraded since. They're like, yo, where are you finding $700 <laughs> apartments now? So. Yeah, yeah. So um, we got intro We did the sort of Saturday session. I think I talked about something JavaScript. I thought it was like something Ruby. Netlify based or I don't know. I don't think I was at Netlify then. I was at Block then. Okay. So I had just moved to the Bay Area. I was, was like it? months in. Okay. Yeah. Again, this is this is too long and we're too old. So that's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was wild. Anyway, we met and uh, yeah, and we just stayed connected off and on, like doing podcasts together and just like keeping up with like where we're working, how we're working. I mean, like the big thing for me was this was a moment where I knew that I wanted to be into the tech, in the tech space somehow, but I didn't know like how. Yeah. And like I was coming in like uneducated black man coming out of the military, like how are other black people doing this? And then like yeah. meeting Saran and getting to know Saran and then like meeting you, I was like, yo, if, if, if there is a like successful black developing story, like I want to follow it. I want to know. And like, I just happen to have this guy's email now. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that was it. I have this developing story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Dot com. laughs> but, uh, before I, we, we sort of just jumped right in. Can you d- tell the, the set of listeners who you are and like, yeah. What do you do? Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to y'all for a little bit. I'm gonna ignore him. I love this. Uh, yo, I'm Jay Miller. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. Um, I've been doing things around content for uh, a decade now, which is weird, but like cool. Um, I also do some podcasting. I I like to focus on tech and also things that just generally help people, and that's kind of what some of the stuff that I've been doing mostly has been about creating technical and not so technical content around all that stuff yeah so the que- i'm gonna ask the next question like how because i met you before you got into tech yeah so like what were you doing before tech i was selling toilet paper like <laughs> that's the that's that's like the that's the glow up like answer there no nah, i was i was an it admin uh i had been in the military i got out of the military i was a sys admin for a while i think when we met i was still a sys admin I was a SharePoint administrator. Funny how that came back around. Yeah, I mean, you, you uh, went from selling TP to Azure. That's <laughs> Azure Compute. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a thing there. Uh, and then I went into marketing because I really wanted to just like do something with the programming skills that I had. Like the IT company that I, or the IT team that I was working with, uh, the systems were kind of in place. There wasn't really much room to deviate from it. So the marketing team was like, yo, you do that programming stuff, like come over to us and we will let you automate whatever you want. Yeah. So I, I just got into a position to where, are we, are we getting the life story now? Is this where, I mean, we, this what's, where this, at? what's going? Right, we're, we got time. we're rolling with it. So yeah, I, I basically just started automating my job up to the point where like I would go to work, 
hit like two buttons and then just get up and walk around the building all day and just yeah. like talk to people and just socialize and chat. And you know, I, I, it felt like time theft. It might've been, <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, the work got done. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's funny. Cause uh, I think I even shared this with you. That was very similar. I, I came from sales, yeah. automated my job through learning how to do VB macros instead yeah. of Excel where I would watch Netflix and Netflix went to the phone. And I would actually binge the last airbender, like the okay. Nick Nickelodeon show. Okay. I watched all, I think three seasons at that point, uh, watched a movie that wasn't that great. Like I just watched <laughs> a bunch of cartoons while I was like, supposed to be working. I mean, but uh, when you could automate and you know how to do code, like it unlocks so much stuff. And that was the thing, like the company that I was working for, uh, before they got acquired, they bought another company and like my whole job was take their products from their database, take the images and put them on their store. I was an e-commerce specialist yeah. or whatever. And they were like, all right, they sat me down. They're like, hey, we're buying this company. We've got 40,000 items that we need you to work on. We expect this to take you like all year, like take your time with it. Like this is going to be your life. Yeah. Eight hours later, I'm like, so that's done. Like, what do you want me to do now? And they were like, what? <laughs> So like at this at this point I I knew that it was like all right I am I am doing too much for this to just be what I do. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean so we jumped into what you were doing before but you also were you served in the military as yeah, well. Yeah, I was in the Marine Corps. Uh you know, Iran, you know for some reason I thought stuff. you were in the Navy the whole time, which I, I know mean, it's so like, that's blasphemy to to Funny to so that. I mean, well, Marine Corps part of the Navy all that stuff. Da, 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 I just figured San thing. Diego so I got yeah. to San Diego. San Diego was my last duty station. And then yeah. like I got married. My wife's from LA. So like we just kind of stayed out here. But like being in the military was cool. Um, this, this be like this ADHD story now. Like I got diagnosed with ADHD when I was 28. And I just basically I was either good at something or I struggled at it, which is probably why I automated my job and then like was a horrible employee after that. But in that moment, the military was like so much structure that I just had never had that was refreshing. And like, yeah. even in that I was, I was teaching people like my whole job was to like bring people in, train them up for a deployment. We would deploy for four months, come back. One group of people would leave. Another group of people would come in, train those people up for deployment. We would deploy. And I did that for three years. I went on five deployments in three years. And it was great because I got to travel a lot, but I also got to get a lot of time educating people and training them on like, hey, this is what we've got to do. We're going to be doing this for the next four months. You need to be ready for this. And yeah. I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that. Okay. Which is like not unlike your uh, your current role at Microsoft. Exactly. Where, you're, you're where I go, people. hey, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're you're in the, the content game. So like, so from Code Newbie weekend sessions, you got the, the role. Uh, and then now, well, you, you did one tour at, uh, <laughs> elastic. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, was, I was there for, I was there for a minute. I honestly, that was like, that was the opening for DevRel for me. Like yeah. I, I went to a conference, uh, North Bay Python, shout out to the folks in Petaluma. And like, I sat down with Heidi Waterhouse from launch darkly oh, and nice. yeah, great person. She was like, she was like recruiting people for like their DevRel team. Yeah. And like, we were just talking, we were talking over lunch. She's like, yo, I'd love for you to apply for this role do you live near Oakland? And I was like, Oh no, I live in San Diego. And she's like, Oh yeah, you'd have to move to Oakland. And I was like, again, I'm not, no, <laughs> it's, yeah. I love my weather down here. It's great. I also love my, my mortgage. So like, that's great too. Uh, and, and so like at that point, having talked with her for, you know, a good hour, hour and a half and kind of understanding what the role was and what it did, I was like, wow, this is all the stuff that I've been doing my entire career and not getting paid for, but yeah. now I'm getting paid to do it. So let me just, let me start focusing on that. So then I, I like, I talked to all the people that I knew in the community and I was like, Hey, I feel like I want to be a developer advocate. I feel like this is like my entrance into the tech space. And like, I talked to some people at an unnamed company and they were like, well, we want you to be like a senior engineer first and then like transition into, okay. to dev, you know, developer evangelism or, you know, or whatever. And like, yeah. I was like, ah, I'm not about that life. And then like Elastic reached out to me or someone from Elastic reached out to me and said, Hey, one of your friends said you were looking for a job. I've been listening to your podcast. I think it's great. I've, I've looked at the YouTube videos that you've been doing. Basically I looked at all the stuff you've done for free how would you like to get paid to do that for us? And yeah. I was like, 
that sounds cool. Like, yeah, I'll do that. That, that sure. Like, all right. And then I knew nothing about elastic at the time, but the thing I appreciated most about it was that they trusted me enough to know that like I was the only Python developer on like my little team. They trusted me that I knew enough Python and that I knew enough about creating content that there wasn't really a question about how I was going to do it. It was just like, all right, let's, let's let Jay do what Jay does best. And, yeah. and honestly, most of that year I spent like emceeing like community, like conferences and stuff, speaking at events. And then like, I got into this thing where all of a sudden I was leading like fireside chats. It was like, <laughs> Oh, Hey, like we're going to do black history month. Jay's going to be emceeing this fireside chat. And then Amazing. all of a sudden it's women's history month and Jay's going to be leading. <laughs> I was like, um, that feels weird, but this like, is for elastic or for Python for elastic. Okay. And, and like, people at Elastic outside of my team were asking me to lead these discussions that they were a part of. And that's when I was like, oh, okay. So I need to double down on like the, let's have authentic conversations with people. Yeah. And you know, at that point I got a phone call and then like, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how did you get connected to the Python community? Cause I know you were, you were in the, the code newbie Python community, but the thing is when I remember I was actually talking to Carol Willing and I was like, oh Love yeah, Carol. I, I know, um, I know it's the Python community and like she's name dropped you and was like, <laughs> oh, Jay, no. like, do you know Jay Miller? And I was like, yeah, me and Jay go way back. And it happened a few times. People in the Python community were like, oh yeah, do you know Jay? I feel like I'm being, I'm being like blown up right now. I don't know if I feel about this, but yeah, no, shout out to Carol. Carol's the homie. I, I, I talked to Carol probably like once a year and stuff and like we, we just catch up and it's great. Um, how did I get in the Python community? Honestly, I wanted to be a Ruby developer first. Really? So I did the uh, Ruby thing. I mean, I did the whole Ruby thing. And I mean, again, this is young, impatient me. And I'm like, yo, Ruby, da, 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 da. I do like, I think it was like free code camp or when I do the free code camp, like build a Instagram or no, build an Airbnb clone. Okay. With like Ruby on with with just, and they were just talking about Ruby at first. Yeah. And then like, all right, now you know enough Ruby, it's time to learn Ruby on Rails. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like this is an intro class? Like, no, I'm done. Um, and then I was like, well, what else is there to learn? And I, I was hearing stuff about Python, and this is like during the Python two, Python three, like wars were happening and stuff. And yeah, that that's a whole thing. That's like a whole it, it, it's funny that there's there was a it's like the the Avengers when they split. Uh, for yeah, that. I was gonna say there's a whole cinematic universe <laughs> that could be made off of that. Like, how yeah. dare you? Three point five F strings? What? Like, you know that whole thing. But so I had to like start over. And like, luckily, I that was the first time I learned that like once you know the the foundational concept, it's yeah. it's easy to to pick up something else. And I remember like the first interaction with the Python community was real negative. Cause like I had like a simple question. It was more, I don't know how to do these, like this enumeration type thing. I know you don't do the thing that you do in JavaScript where you add some plus plus one stuff to it and like all that. And then someone on like Reddit was like, Oh, your code's just so unpythonic right now here. I'm going to fix your code. And, and we, were, we were talking about this before with like the classic, idea of like, classic Reddit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we were talking about this with like open source of like people like jumping in and just being like, your code is trash here. Yeah. I've, I've written the better code of like, that's, that's not the way to do it. I'm talking to y'all now. That's not the way to do it. But like, I was almost like, yo, I'm going to just pick up JavaScript, I guess. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I, but it doesn't end now Python. Now I know. Yeah. Um, but, like, there was this real feeling. And then I went to a San Diego user group. Uh, shout out to the San Diego Python user group. Yeah. Where I met Trey Hunter, uh, Melanie Arbor, Which and I, Carol. I didn't know Trey lived. Yeah, Does he's he done. Right a, we we had dinner yeah. like a month ago. And yeah, like, he was great. up in uh, up in uh, Oakland for a moment. Love love what Trey's doing. Yeah, but like and Carol and Carol was there, and I remember I was working on this thing for like my podcast, and I was like, oh, I want to use Flask to like integrate like my podcast feed and all this other stuff, and I was having some trouble figuring out some concept. I don't remember what it was. So like I was starting to have like flashbacks from like that that moment of like, oh, your code is garbage. There's like fix it. And Carol, Carol and Trey were both sitting next to me. And I was like, hey, do you mind helping me with this question? And like, we sat there for a good like 15 minutes. And they were just asking me questions about like podcasting and like what I was trying to build. Yeah. And like, they were genuinely interested in what I was doing. And I was like, oh, this community is dope. Like they actually care about like the stuff that's being made. And then they answered the question. And they're like, oh yeah, this is how you do this. And I was like, oh, that's how you do, this is how you like, I don't want to yeah. curse. This is how you like not be a jerk in yes. like the open source community is like you actually care about the the developer behind the screen 
and like what they're trying to accomplish and you work on solving that problem. Yeah, there, there's there's definitely a culture of like the sort of hacker rank where it's yeah. always someone out to get their like the next green square. And uh, I mean, I'm 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 recognize that it exists, yeah. but I always want to be in a place where and we talked about analogies about open source before we hit record. Like open source is like a it's like a hotel, like yeah. a hotel chain. Like you just know where everything is in the hotel. Absolutely. And as long as everything's set up for you, like you know where the soaps are, you know where the the, the blankets are or whatever, if they're extra blanket. So like when it comes to open source, it's like someone knows, oh, contributing guide, or here's the the maintainer. Let me just have a question, open issue or discussion or discourse. Like hopefully that's that's outlined for the person to not feel stuck. But also with that, if you go to a hotel that's super nice and like the service desk is rude. Yes. Or you, like you, 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 it's, hey, it's gonna be on TikTok. Pretty excuse soon. me, can I get some towels? No, you can't get any towels. Like like if that happens, like yeah. I'm not going to that hotel anymore. Yeah. And I think that was, I think, you know, talking, you know, transitioning into like this whole idea of like contributing to open source. I don't have a lot of experience in that. And I think that's why, because some of my first experiences with the open source community were so negative. And again, it's not to, not to say that everyone is like that, but you see and you hear so many stories about like, I wanted to, you know, contribute for the first time on this thing. And that's why I love what you're doing so much is that you're, you're making that easier for people. Yeah. But like so many people, including myself have tried to go like, I, I just sincerely want to be helpful. And like, you just get friction the entire time. Yeah. Oh, why? why this isn't a problem that's worth solving. Oh, my bad. Like, cool. Like, you know, whatever. But like for me now, I am in the the game of like one trying to make that experience better for the the people coming up, but also thinking about how do I do that for projects that I make because I definitely make projects and all of them are open source. And talking to you again, you're more than welcome to uh, take part of that. But like, I want to make sure that the experience that I had that almost took me away from a community that now yeah. I owe my career to, like, doesn't happen to the next person. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's uh, paying it forward. And the thing is, like, uh, I don't know if anybody's, if anybody's listening to this audio, but, like, we're both black men. So, like, we yeah, tend to thing. attract more black folks into tech and get lots of questions. And one thing I really love about Python is, um, I don't know about the conferences, because we talked about that earlier, but what I tend to find a lot of Python, up-and-coming Python devs, like, because yeah. com community colleges, they, they teach Python. Yeah. And there's all these other boot camps that teach Python. There's all this open source documentation and tutorials around Python and it just becomes a nice place to fall into. Yeah. And, uh, once you connect to the community then like you're, you're set to hope, well, you're not set. There's going to be a lot of uphill battles to get to your first job, Yeah. but at least you have a path. Like people have done it. And it's such a blessing and a curse in that like, there's so much stuff out there and it comes at a degree of like, Hey, this is this is what if you don't look like Jay and Brian, you can do and you'll land a six-figure job in 6 months or 6 yeah. weeks or whatever. And it's like you know, I'm very open about the things that I don't have. Like one, I've got ADHD, so I don't have a long attention span. You you yeah. you got me. We're engaged. <laughs> I love this. Excellent. But like I also don't have a college degree. And I, I didn't go to a boot camp. Like I am completely community taught. Like everything that I learned is like going to user groups, looking online, watching conference videos, and just trying to build stuff that I thought was cool. And if someone asked me, they're like, oh, so like you went from marketing and then like six months later or six weeks later, you were in DevRel. And I was like, no, I was in IT and wanted to be a software engineer. And then... I transitioned into marketing and then I trans transitioned into Je DevRel. That whole process took like five years. Yeah. So like that's that's the real story. When people are like, oh, how long did it take for you to get a, a tech job? Like, no, I tell them five years. I don't tell them like oh, yeah. six why, weeks. Why, I guess the question, I guess I know the answer, but I've, I'm sure why five years? I mean, one, I had a family. Like yeah. you can't like... There were a couple startups, so yeah. some that we both know, and, yeah. and they were like, yo, we want you to pick up everything, move to Oakland, like, come work with it. And I was like, I need benefits. Like, yeah. also, some companies weren't even going, like, I couldn't even get through the interview process because, like, the education section was required and like, <laughs> yeah. high school, like, okay, cool, like, high school diploma, that's that's me, like, some 
learning skills that I got in the military and stuff, which to me is valid. Like that's yeah. enough. And like, I mean, the military is all about on the job training. So I was like, you know, whatever, if I need to learn it, I'll learn it. Like, that's fine. But a lot of it was like, I'm not even, I'm not even getting my foot through the door. And then it was like, that didn't change until I started going to conferences. Yeah. And like once I went to a conference, you know, you meet people and they're like, oh yeah, hey, our company's hiring, you know, do you want to do like a mock, you know, do an interview or something like in the next room? I'm like, you're telling me I just, you know, spend a few hundred dollars, you know, fly up to Petaluma or whatever. And then now people are just offering me job interviews. Like, yeah. okay, that's, that's a way to do it, I guess. It, and it's a, it's a, once you, it's, so the one thing I wanted to say, it's like, it's not about who you know, it's who knows you. Yeah. And I think that's something that I, I tell Cause like there's this whole like no degree, no problem when it comes to tech. And I say, I think it's true from, for the majority. Like if you have no degree and you look like everyone else, you're, you're totally fine. Yeah. But in reality, like folks like me and you, like we have to have somebody who are vouching for us yeah. or some institution that vouches for us. And I'm saying this from experience. So I have a degree yeah. in finance. So like I can check that box. But when I said I had no coding experience, that has a whole nother like conversation yeah. that I have to go through, but I made it, I arrived, I got my first job, the first job validated the second job, second job validated the third job. And now I'm like on my, well, now I'm running a company. Yeah. So like, I don't need anybody to answer to except I, maybe VCs. I mean, think about like the mental tax too, of being the only black person at an event too. Like I said, like it's yeah. great. Go to a conference, give a talk, talk to people. I am almost always the only black speaker. Like, yeah. It is just a thing. I've and I mean, uh, a friend of mine who's like also the only other black speaker in the Python community, like we, Wait, th- th- I, I, I'm, I, I can see their name face. Kojo. Kojo. Yes. Shout out to Kojo. See, Kojo, like, that's yes. the thing is like, I whoa, met Kojo, like, Kojo in the uh, Dominican Republic at a Python event. Yo, Ko- Kojo is the hardest working man in Python. Like yes, straight he, up. He's everywhere. He is. So he, he does this thing with Defno where like his whole problem, his whole like idea was like spreading Django around North America, which is cool when you get to go to all the conferences, yes. but also it's weird when you're like, again, the only black person and like, yeah. And also six, eight or whatever. It is. Oh yeah. Also. Yeah. Kojo is like <laughs> extremely tall, but like, so there's like, now there's like three or four of us and it's almost like we all, we speak at like every conference, but we're still like the only black people speaking. <laughs> and sometimes we're the only I, black I, I people in attendance. I, I, it's, it's not unreal for even other language groups and, and frameworks and conferences. Like, there's folks who get in the circuit. It's, it goes down to it's about who knows you. Yeah. So I, I get invited everywhere. I have to say no to a lot of places. So like I hired black folks on my team at yeah. GitHub for the purpose of saying, I don't want to do this anymore. Do this with like the new pe- upcoming yeah. people. They're validated. They work at GitHub. And then, and like the other side of that, like you, you know, what's happening. You know what, you know that you are the like, oh, we, we need representation of color happening at this event. And like, now that's Che. And it's like, okay, cool. I'm going to make this painful. (laughs) Like, this is what I do. Like I have given like some of the talks that I've given have been like straight up, like you probably don't want to hear this. And it's like, like I gave a talk. So luckily this was like Juneteenth conference, but like I indexed like police brutality in America, according to like the Washington post and New York times. And like, it's an open data set. Go look for it. It's great. It's there. And like, (laughs) it's not great, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's not great. It's not great. But like the, the thing that I did with that was I said, like, here's how you here's how you apply data based activism and like address problems that are very real and sometimes uncomfortable. Like one of the things that I did with that was I included the name of all of the people who had been killed in that moment. And like even as we're talking about this now, you feel the weight. So yeah. imagine being up on stage, you're the only black person there, and you're like, I want to talk about police brutality in a post-George Floyd world. And people are like, whoa, what did we sign up for? Yeah, I thought we were past this. Exactly. We marched. <laughs> yeah, we, we changed our, our Twitter you know profile to a black square. You know, it's fine. Yeah. But like doing that, one, it did two things. It brought the people in the room who cared up to me. So it, it, it introduced me to people that I wanted to be affiliated to that I wanted to be connected with. But it also made people understand that if you're going to use me, I'm also like, I'm not going to necessarily use you back, Yeah. but I'm going to talk about the things that are important to me, that are important to my culture, that are important to, you know, the next 
group of people that hopefully look like us that are joining the community of like, oh, hey, if you want to do Devro, that's cool. But also, did you know that you could use your, you know, employers' resources and things to do things that will actually drive change in your uh, change in your community? Yeah. And to me, like, it worked. Like, I had more and more people that I wanted to talk to. More and more people, when I talked about ADHD and mental health, they're like, yo, I got ADHD too, and I'm afraid to tell my boss about it. And I'm like, yo, let me tell you about the benefits that you can get from this, though. <laughs> and like, Yeah, and it just takes one person to show, like, open the door and, like, be that sort of voice the the face the recognizable well face. see that's the thing is i don't i never want to be the face yeah because i'm just a face <laughs> oh, like yeah. i am like one and, and well, that's, we could talk about being the face I exactly think, yeah. and that's that's the problem was like if you're going to use me to be the face of your like diversity for your program it's like no i yeah. i'm not going to let you do that so what i'm going to let you do is i'm going to give you one perspective and i'm going to open the door for so many people that are like me so that now you have the faces and you have here, here are multiple people. And that's, again, like, this is why I'm enjoying what you're doing so much because it's like making or making open source accessible to more people, more diverse people in general without having to say, this is a diversity project. Yeah. Because one, the second you say this is a diversity project, everybody that's like, well, I'm yeah, black. People, are, I don't want you to pander to me. Like, yeah. Right. Or people are checked out because, oh, that's for them, not for me. Right. Right. So it's like this idea of like, oh, wow, we just made it easier for people to connect with one another. We made, we've created new pipelines for people to get hired. Like, yeah. I've, the people that I know through you, that I've now met other people through, I'm watching all of them go and make six figures for the first time. And I'm just like, this is amazing. Like, this is great. And, and, you know, we talked about this at the beginning when I was in the military, you know, one of the things I loved was I loved watching other people that I had trained go on and get like all these accommodation, like our commendations for like the stuff that they did in their next unit yeah. off of the knowledge that I taught them. Yeah. And it was like, if I can watch other people, you know, you know, you know, blow up in the scene and stuff and like, just do great and do phenomenal things. That's awesome. That's to me, that's the biggest contribution that I can make to the tech community period. There's no line of code that outvalues the way that like, I took somebody who didn't know nothing and now they're, you know, not yeah. all because of me, but because of their own drive and having someone in the room yeah. to help guide them. They're now a superstar in their own right. Yeah. And that's what I love seeing. Like, uh, so like, I'm sure you've seen a Kelsey Hightower talk. Oh yeah. And uh, he does a phenomenal job where he represents the product he's talking about, it's Kubernetes, which is the thing he talks about all the time. But he leads so strong in the live coding that you just forget that this is a, a black man live coding. Yeah. But what I love about it is like, there's certain talks that this like blew me away. Like where there was a talk where he was talking about how somebody saw him on stage, watched his talk, um, was actually in prison, and got out of prison, learned how to do. Python, Kubernetes, like yeah. all the things because Kelsey was like that face. And Yo, shout out to all the organizations that are yeah. helping like actually do rehabilitation. The whole thing that like the prison system was designed to do, but that somehow doesn't. Yeah, like, it's wild. It's, it's follow the money. Wrong show, wrong show. My bad, <laughs> yeah. my bad. This is, these, are, these are things that I talk about on my show. <laughs> like, okay, I, get yeah. to, I get to be all activist. Yeah, activist yeah. Jay, you know? This is a, definitely a different episode than uh, we've had previous, but uh, I love talking to you about this stuff too as well because like we can we can break bread and like have this conversation yeah because we come from not similar backgrounds like but similar backgrounds which is like wild to say yeah because like people on the surface would be like oh you know jay you mean not not all black people are like and do the same thing you but know that the whole thing, thing? Is, but the, what's wild is like all black people know each other in tech though i mean it's <laughs> we yes. find each other pretty quick yes the, shout out to the back channel <laughs> but like one of the things that you talked about was kind of like the idea of like when Kelsey gets on stage and goes so deep into coding, people forget that there's a black man on stage. Yeah. I feel like we're not far enough away from that being such a rarity. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember the, who the artist was, but I remember there's like, I mean, well, one, there's a couple songs. There's even like one that's on like, like TikTok now. It's like, okay, so first things first, I'm blackity black, black, the blackity black, black. Like I grew up in the South. Like I grew up in like, the backwood south like the the country south like everybody that was black that i grew up with i was related to like that's how like woods we were so i grew up where it was like oh that's the black family down the road and like that's still how i feel that the, the developer space is yeah so i don't want people to forget that there's a black man on stage 
I want yeah. them to forget that it's me. Like if yeah. they're like, oh hey, Kojo did a good job, and I was like, actually that was me. <laughs> like you know maybe that's like there's like some good and bad to that. I want them to have the idea of like we don't have to we don't have to reach too hard to find an, an amazing developer of color. And I'm not, not even just black, like an amazing developer of color, amazing like woman developer, amazing non-binary developer, trans developer, whatever. Yeah. Like it's not that hard. Like I find people all the time that are mentors to me that like I'm learning from, even if they have less developer experience than me. And like in that moment, I'm like, how is it so easy for me to find them? But like other people struggle and it's because yeah. they're not looking. No, it's you're not looking. But then we, we talked about this because it was like a, some blowback on like Render ATL. Like there yeah. was like tweets going out and where folks were like, oh, it was like so diverse. But all the pictures were just the white folks at the <laughs> event. And I totally get how that works because like you find your people. And especially when you're the minority at the event, which is like anybody not black at Render ATL. Yeah. It's going to naturally happen. It's exactly what happens in the inverse when we go to events. Like yeah. we find each other. And uh, but I also want to like. If we can. Yeah, if we can. Yeah. But I also I know folks who have like removed themselves from the scene because they were that face yeah. and they got burnt out by yeah. being that face, which is why I built the um, awesome black developers repo, which you're a part of. So I wanted to do something similar with like awesome black developer advocates. The thing that I worried about was it, it was in a time where people were being like, like attacked on social media and things yeah. like that. So I was like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to get like their permission. That's how I like how you did it. Cause you were like, you can add yourself to this. Like yeah. send, you know, create the issue, you know, do the PR yeah, or whatever. All like it's yeah. all there. Um, for me, I was just like going to find people. Cause also I was genuinely interested. Like, Hey, who else is black? That's Endeavor. Like, I want to know these people. And like, I was like, uh, I should probably get their permission first for stuff like that. So like, yeah. I, I completely like, I like, I, I deleted the repo. Like, I didn't even like, like, archive it, it, it's it hard. Cause like, you don't know who wants attention on them. And some people who are just trying to, you know, not everyone's in a financial place where you could be a face or go to a conference because like you're just trying to pay the bills and you can't ruin great example of this i know uh i'm not gonna say their names i didn't ask them but like i know an amazing uh black developer in alabama and like he's a awesome community contributor like our team at elastic was hiring and i was like yo you you are perfect for this role i i've already thrown your name out there and everybody on the team wants you to apply to this role and he's like i don't want to do it and it, it was that exact reason of like i just want to do my job, you know, make the little content that I make or whatever, take care of my family, you know, take care of my moms and them. I don't, I don't want to be making all this money living in like, you know, Alabama where like a lot of money can bring attention to you yeah. and things like that. And I was like, I respect that. Yeah. And, and that's why I feel like there's, there's almost a pressure of like, I don't want to be the face. I want there to be multiple faces, but I also don't want people to feel like they have to be the face. Yeah. And that's where like things like render ATL are great because it opens the door for so many people, but if it's opening the door for everybody, that's just us. Like, again, we know each other. Like we all know each other. Apparently that's yeah. the trick. But it, it's gotta be the sort of proving ground to then get people on the PyCon stage. And it, yeah. and it shouldn't be a proving ground. And that this is, yeah. this is the exact thing that like, I've talked to like organizers in like the Python software foundation about this too, of like, there should not be a proving ground. Like that is weird. Like yeah. I don't, I don't want like, I mean, we, we called it like the BET of like conferences. Like, no, it's, we need to work as individuals within our local communities yeah. to amplify these voices and that they will naturally prove themselves just from doing what they're doing. Yeah. I didn't have to go through a proving gown. I just wanted to speak at a conference and then like my talk got accepted. I don't even think they knew I'm black because my name is so like yeah. race neutral. So Jay I, Miller, like yeah, Brian Douglas, we got it. Exactly. <laughs> and, and our parents knew what they were doing. Like, yes. exactly. So like there is this moment of, I got on stage and funny enough, the first conference talk I gave, the person that spoke after me was now my coworker, Steve Dower. Okay. So like, and he literally told me like, Hey, I'd love to have you come work at Microsoft. And this is like five years ago. Yeah. So at that point, I'm like giving my first talk. I'm meeting someone from a company that I will go on to eventually work with. And he was like the first person that I reached out to on my first day was like, Hey, yo, I made it. Like we're Amazing. here. And you know, we were, we were in Ireland. I mean, well, one shout out to Devro. You <laughs> yeah. get to go to Ireland. We're, you can just flex. drop that. We're flex, but okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, like we were, we were together in Ireland and we were chatting and he was just like, I'm glad you didn't give up because I've had so many people that I've seen at conferences that I've tried to get there. And like, 
eventually they just burn out because they're tired. They're yeah. tired of being that face. They're tired of being that one person. Yeah. So I wanted to, as we're winding down, because we, we have limited time. And Dang, this went quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had mentioned something that I want you to share uh, as it's recorded around the public pool. Okay. okay. I know this is like preparation for your future talk, but uh, around open source and compares, comparing it to public pools. Yeah, so since since we're flexing, like yeah. I'm giving a keynote, my first keynote at DjangoCon this this October. Excellent. It's gonna be great. Um, and the idea, uh, I'm doing it along with Melanie Arbor, one of the first people that I met in the Python community. We're we're doing it as a co presentation, and the idea was thinking about how we look at our open source projects. And you know, you talked about it being a hotel, and I said, you know, it's it's kind of like a public pool. You know, the, the tech world itself is is very much like a pool in that like, oh, yeah, anybody can come. You can swim. Have fun. Have a great time. Yeah. But we know like there's there's like some conversations there. And like, you know, for one, like I grew up believing like black people don't swim like straight up in the military. I'm not going to name any names. We had to do a swim call and people were like, do you know how to swim? And I was like, yes, I know how to swim. Like this is a thing. But then, you know, going on to open source. But could you explain that for people, why black people, the the sort of analogy? Oh, so... Or the myth? So a few things happened. One, uh, pools were one of the last things to be integrated. Uh, and then also, before lifeguards were like a common thing, the largest number of drownings in public pools were from black communities, were from black people, black people dying. So there was this stigma of like, oh no, either you don't know how to swim or if you are black, you just don't swim because all the stories that you were hearing about, you know, oh, all these black kids are dying because, you know, they weren't properly trained. They don't have the money. They don't have the resources. They don't have the access. I think you see where we're coming yeah. with the technology, you know. Yeah, so open source here. is a very exactly thing. So if you think about this idea, there's there's been all these diversity pushes now that are like, yo, we need to make technology as a whole more inclusive. We need to make open source more inclusive. We need to find more diverse people. And it's like, you have two options. You're at a pivotal point here. Another thing that happened with swimming pools is once that happened, this was also the introduction of private clubs, of like these, these social clubs, these social gatherings that would have private pools and you had to be a member and pay to get access to. Yeah. So... In the open source world, as we're all focusing on this idea of we want a more inclusive and more integrated open world, open source, you know, environment, what we've done is we've said, let's just let everybody come in. They don't know how they don't necessarily have the same training or knowledge or funding to learn how to swim and do all these things the right way. And we don't have any of those things in place. And when someone creates a new project and they throw an open source license on it, you're doing the same thing with your own personal pool. You're saying, hey, I'm throwing this pool party. There are no rules. There are no lifeguards. If you jump in the water and you drown, that's your fault. Yeah. And that's the feeling that people get. So like the talk that we're doing is focusing on like, hey, look, pool rules suck. We know everyone hates, you know, no running. But like at the same time, like those serve a purpose and there are things that we can do to make pool parties fun. We can put out chips and food. We can put out, you know, floaties and pool noodles and all that. If people don't know how to swim, we can say like, hey, here's here's some basics to swimming, but also we want to keep you in the shallow end so that you can just stand up if you're struggling. And, yeah. and things like that. We can put all of those systems in place and they exist. That's the thing is they exist, but nobody does it. Which yeah. is also why, I, like, I built a project that like helps people do that. So, yeah, like, that's, that's why, why I built a project that helps people do that. Exactly. As well. it, it's funny that like when people who have had to navigate those waters, I mean, keeping the analogy going, like on their own, the first thing that they want to do is build something that makes it so that it's easier for the other people behind them. Yeah, which is why I'm so happy you made it. You've arrived. Uh, you're like a you're growing to be a bigger pillar in the Python community. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, you got the dad bod going. <laughs> I Yo, got the same dad thing. life, dad life, <laughs> love it, own it. Yeah, excellent. Well, Jay, thanks for uh, taking making the drive up. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and make sure you like and subscribe. Follow this guy. You'll learn a lot. It'll advance your career a ton. I know this is a blooper reel. Make sure it gets thrown in there somehow, Chris. I, I trust you. But yeah, all that and stay saucy. <laughs>